what you're seeing on the screen is actually a C++ port of my JavaScript physics engine that I have been developing over the past few months and in order to achieve something like this I had to learn a lot of different principles and concepts from scratch before moving on with implementing something like this in my own games I wanted to share everything that I learned while designing this physics engine in this free collision detection course which consists of about 10 tutorials we will learn about different types of collision detection for example collision of line versus other lines collision of circles against other circles and all the different combinations just to make sure that we're covering everything this is another physics demo and by the end of this tutorial series we're probably not even going to be able to do something like this yet and physics engines require a lot of knowledge to get them to this point but the first step is trying to figure out collision detection once we have that covered I'll create another series for physics engines so we can implement something similar to what you're seeing on the screen right now physics engines can be extremely powerful when it comes to adding dynamic objects and interactivity to your games but I want to stress the point that the path to making your own physics engine is going to be not that easy however the first step is always collision detection and that's really all that this series is trying to accomplish using the next 10 or so tutorials and once we get that all worked out we can move on to developing something more complex such as a physics engine I also implemented collision detection in 3D with my game demo Platypus Cart, which you're seeing right now. And so here, a simple ray is cast down on the track, and that's how the game knows where to display the, the car on top of the road. And at this point, there's only one ray, and the four wheels are not even intersecting with the actual road it's just a very basic test but I wanted to show you this because just to show how adding collision detection to your game engine can give you ability to add various functionality and you'll be able to make games that you weren't able to before and so I think collision detection is a important subject and it really deserves a course series in itself we're going to do everything from scratch so uh, we're not gonna have the results you're seeing here uh, right now right away but slowly we'll get to the point where we can do something similar to this collision detection can be also used for platformers such as the demo that you're viewing right now on the screen and probably one of the first types of games we're going to develop after the series are completed is something like this just a two-dimensional platformer game and so I'm going to start everything from scratch we're gonna start developing our engine from basically nothing and by the end of this tutorial I'll probably be able to show you how to do um, something similar to what you're seeing right now most likely however by the end of the tutorial series we'll have something like this and when you get to a point where you want to make an, an actual game 
collision detection is such an important feature to have, uh, not having it is going to be incredibly limiting in terms of what you can do. It's used in platformers or RPGs you know, when all kinds of different objects collide with one another. And uh, this is my old JavaScript demo. And I received many requests to explain how to do something like this. And many of the comments and emails I received were asking about collision detection. So I'm glad that we finally got to this point where we can render sprites with the game engine so far, but we're not able to do anything interesting. And so collision detection will allow us to take that next step so we can start making some really interesting games. And with that thought in mind, let's start the series and let's start with taking a brief look at most of the collision cases that you might possibly need to collide anything with anything in your games. And these are the ones that in my research I found to be the most important ones. I'll go over each one of them separately and briefly and then we'll move on to the part of the tutorial where we actually write the JavaScript source code that allows us to accomplish these types of collision tests. If you don't want to go through all that, you can simply grab the source code from the screen right now and check out the code by yourself. But I do recommend going through the series just to find out how the game engine that has been developed up to this point uh, functions and so you can start implementing collision detection in your own games and actually understand how they work. I'll start with the first case which is basically a point inside a rectangle and this test is very common. It's probably in 75% of all games we just check whether the point coordinates Y inside the box. The second collision test is between two boxes where we need to determine the area here whether it overlaps or not and if it does then we can consider these boxes as colliding with each other. The next test is between two polygons that are not necessarily square. Normally to collide these types of polygons you would have to check for a collision between each line in one polygon and each line in the other. But we don't really have to do that on every frame and so what we do is we draw boxes around these complex shapes first and see if they collide. This doesn't necessarily mean that the actual shapes collide as seen in this diagram but it allows us to eliminate calculations when the two shapes are too far apart. And that actually makes a big difference on performance of your, let's say, physics engine. And so the next case is, I think, the most important one of them all. And that is the line versus line collision that results in an intersection point between two lines. When two lines cross each other, they create this intersection point. When lines cross each other and form this central point, it's fundamental to so many things, pretty much everything in collision detection. And a lot of the time it's seen in other types of collision detection. For example, a square against a line. So here basically we're doing the same test except we're testing whether the line collides with all four lines of the original object. The next test is distinct and it's a little different from all the other ones. And it is the point inside a circle test. Or if you're doing this in 3D you can call this a sphere. And so to check whether there's a collision, 
we first draw a line from the center of the circle and then we compare the length of this line to the length of the radius of the circle. If the line is shorter, then there's a collision. If a line is longer, then the point lies outside of the circle. The next test you want to know about is the circle versus line intersection. And this is usually achieved by drawing a line from the center of the circle toward the closest point on the line. And once that's done, again, we compare the length of that line with the radius. If the line is longer, there's no collision. If the line is shorter, there's a collision within the circle and the line. And the last case I want to mention is the circle versus circle, or sphere versus sphere test. Here what we have is two circles and the way we determine whether they collide is first we draw the line between both of the circle centers and then we draw two lines that represent radius length of each circle and so if the combined sum length of these is longer than the first line we drew then there's a collision but if the sum of the radiuses is shorter than the first line going from one center of the circle to another then there's no collision between the two circles now I want to use briefly this remaining space that's left to explain something I discovered while working on my physics engine and there are two types of complex polygons and the first type is the convex polygon and as you can see a convex polygon doesn't have any angles less than 90 degrees and that's how you identify a convex polygon a concave polygon on the other hand looks something like this and you can identify them by the fact that they have angles between some of their edges that are less than 90 degrees or straight angle and usually these types of concave polygons look like this there's always something that caves in inside the area of the polygon you can tell by just looking at them and there's this one last test um, when there's a point that lies inside a polygon and we want to find out whether it lies inside or not as with the circle we don't have anything like the radius because all of the sides can be different but one way of finding this out is to draw another line that we know for sure is outside of the polygon and by drawing the line from that point which is very far usually from the polygon far enough to make sure it's definitely not in the center and if we draw a line from that point into the point that we're testing against whether it's inside this polygon then what you will find out is you will have a collision point here is odd then we know that the point lies inside the polygon for example if we have another line somewhere over here which is outside of this polygon and in the same way we draw a line to it you'll notice that it will form two intersections now here and here and so when the number of intersections is even like two four or eight that means that the point lies outside of the polygon what's really good about this is that it also covers the case of concave polygons for example if we had a point that lies outside of this polygon and we draw another line from another point that also lies outside and count the number of collisions so there'll be one two three and four and so that's an even number so that means that the point is outside of the polygon let's take a look 
at another example of a point lying inside and we draw another line toward that line and no matter how many intersections there are even in concave polygons let's see one two three so three is an odd number and so whenever we get an odd number of intersection that means that the point is inside the polygon and that's how you test whether a point lies inside a polygon or not and so I think this is enough theory for now and it's a good time to move to the source code part of this tutorial so we can actually write the code and create our own library from scratch that covers all of these cases but also again notice that the line against line intersection is the most important one and it's used in so many different cases